further ado, um, we will press play on the presentation and then Daniel, who is our presenter tonight from the University of Aberdeen, will answer any questions live at the end. So welcome everybody and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Berg. I'm a lecturer here at the University of Aberdeen and I'm a neuroscientist. I like to study how the brain develops and the cells that give rise to the different cell, different populations of cells in the brain. And to, I'm really excited to be part of this year's Tech Fest. There have been so many interesting talks already, and I hope you find this subject interesting. So that's about how we can grow new brain cells in the adult brain. So the brain, the brain, you know where it is. It's right in your skull and it's the most important organ in the nervous system. So scientists um, argue about how many neurons there are in the brain. Some people say 100 billion neurons, others say 80 billion neurons. And this, they argue about these numbers, but the truth is there's a lot, a lot, a lot of neurons in the brain. So, and these neurons, they're important for coordinating the vital functions of the body. So, right, we need to breathe, we need to move, we're able to think, and all these things are controlled by the brain. And the brain receives signal from the outside world and then tells the body what to do with these signals. And roughly you can divide the brain into three main areas. So the, the biggest one is this area here, the cortex. That, that's the wrinkly one on top, you know, and this is important for thinking and remembering and learning new things. But it's also important for emotions and how we get scared. Then we have the cerebellum. That's down here. This area is important. It's back here. It's important for coordination of your movement and making sure that you can do nice paintings and very detailed. And then we have the brain stem, which is, goes down here into the spinal cord down here. And that's important for controlling breathing and digestion. So these are this is the brain. And the, as I said, the most important cells in the brain are the neurons. And they are really, really pretty cells. So here are some neurons here which go to the eye, and they go back to the brain, and then they tell the brain what we're seeing. Here's a neuron in the cerebellum, and you can see it's got very, it looks almost like a tree with lots of branches, all receiving signals here from the other neurons and the environment seeing what's going on. And then they have a long axon here, sending relaying sending this information to other neurons and here we have a weird area of the brain we can see lots of uh, neurons here connecting with each other so the neurons are the important brain cells and they ca carry information in form of electrical impulses from one area to another area of, of the body and you might say now all bah, this is just drawings what does this mean? This is just a drawing here. Someone's just been drawing this. And that's that's correct. This is a drawing. But it's a very special drawing because th these drawings were made by Santiago Ramón y Cajal. So he was a Spanish scientist who lived more than 100 years ago. And he is considered to be the father of modern neuroscience. So before him... People had looked at the brain, but they didn't really know in detail what was going on. But what this guy did, was, which was so special, was that he developed a technique where he could label very few neurons with a dye. So you can see here, these, he labeled these cells. And then if he was able to label one neuron, this neuron would fill up with this dye, and he was able to see the morphology, how they, what these cells looked like. And the trick was only to label a few, because if it would label all of them, everything would be black and he wouldn't be able to see anything. But he was able to label a few of these cells, and then he could see how their, their branches, how they look like trees, and where, where are they connecting. So this was a really remarkable technique. 
and he is, as I said, Ramon y Cajal is considered to be the father of modern neuroscience. So all these neurons we have in the brain, they are mostly born during development. They're born when we are in a mummy's uterus. That's when the, the most of the neurons are born. The brain gets much bigger after we, postnatally after we're born. The, brain grows but it's mostly not the neurons then it's other cell types which are growing bigger and getting more and more those are like all called oligodendrocytes or astrocytes they're usually considered to be more supporting cells supporting the neurons but the neurons are mostly born during embryonic development and they're all born from neural stem cells so neural stem cell is a cell that gives rise to all the different types of neurons and other brain cells. So here, for example, you have an, a diagram here showing a neural stem cell here, which can divide and then eventually give rise to lots of neurons and lots of other cell types as well. So this is what happens to, in development. And I just wanted to show that nowadays, I my research, I'm luckily for me, I'm I'm not very good at drawing. Like Ramon y Cajal, he could sit by his microscope and draw beautiful draw what he saw in the microscope and draw. I couldn't do that. But luckily now we have cameras and very high technology microscopes. So I don't have to draw, but I can take beautiful pictures. And here's a picture of a neural stem cell that was labeled here in the developing brain. And then you can see how it's given rise to neurons in the cortex. So down here we have the neural stem cell. And then we have cells that are starting to migrate. They're starting to wander up here into the cortex and then becoming neurons. And some of them are already starting to send out axons into the other brain regions. So the, this is what modern technology looks like. But still, as you can you can see the similarities between Ramon y Cajal. So I, I labeled very few cells. And then we can see the structure and the and and uh, some behavior of these cells. So most of the neurons are born during development. And Ramon y Cajal he even went so far to say that all neurons are born during development because when he looked in his microscope he didn't see any dividing cells or he didn't see any evidence supporting the fact that neurons were generated in the adult brain. And since he was so powerful and so influential, many people, many scientists that followed him, they just took this for granted that he was right. No, everything happens in development. And nobody really even bothered to look in the adult brain that there are neurons added there. But along came this guy, Joseph Altman, and he worked together with Shirley Bayer and what they did is that they had some wait a minute some neurons are actually born in the adult brain so the way they showed this was in the 1960s there came a new technology when you use radioactive thymidine analogs it's nothing you really need to know how it is but what what's cool with this technique is that you can label newborn cells and then see what they become so he used this and he could see that there were new born neurons in the adult brain and this was in mouse brain actually and rat brains and these dark spots here that's the evidence he had for the newborn cells these are labeled cells that were born in the adult and then became neurons and one problem they had these researchers was that people still didn't want to believe it, this they said oh this is not real this is not right but they kept on working and it turned out after maybe 50 years it's now pretty clear that they were right there is new neurons being born in the adult brain but they had to work very hard and they had actually had quite a difficult time to get this information out to to get people to believe this 
So if you look at this area here of the brain, you might recognize this from the beginning of my talk when I showed you Cajal's drawings. It's actually this area here. So this part of the brain is called the hippocampus. So this area here is the same as this here. And this is the hippocampus. And, and new neurons are born in the adult hippocampus. So that's really cool. And uh, the hippocampus here, it, it actually is, the word hippocampus comes from the ancient Greek and means seahorse. Because if you take out the hippocampus, it kind of looks like a seahorse, apparently. I've never seen it myself. And this area of the brain is important for learning and memory. So when you see new things and also learn new things, this area is important. And it turns out the new neurons that are added in this area in adulthood also are important for this learning and memory. So these new neurons connect with the neurons and help you to learn and remember stuff. And here again we can show some fanc fancier imaging that we can do now when we can look at these uh, neural stem cells. So the neural stem cells are the cells that generate neurons. So in green here I have the neural stem cells in the hippocampus and you can see they've got really nice shape here. They kind of look like neurons or almost with a the, with their branches and long trunks. The red cells are proliferating cells. So these are cells that are actually dividing at, at the moment. And you can see there's actually quite a lot of cells dividing here in this hippocampus. And then blue just labels all the cell nuclei. So this is a picture here of a neural stem cells and the cells that they generate. So these, I really like these neural stem cells because they can be really, really pretty. And here you can see one of the just, uh, individual neural stem cells. Down here it's nuclei and then sending out these branches here and connect. They're, they're actually sensing the environment. When do I have to make new neurons? They're touching the blood vessels and also sensing the other neurons in this area to say, oh, is it time for me to start producing neurons? No, I'll wait a bit. And then when something happens, they'll activate and start generating neurons. So it's these are really cool cells. And so most of the experiments people did was in animal models. So they used mice to see this adult neurogenesis. But some scientists um, said, oh, I don't believe this happens in humans. But people have now been able to show that these new neurons are born in the human brain as well. And it's a bit difficult to see here, but these red cells here are newborn neurons in the adult hippocampus. So the, the, the people have done different kinds of experiments to show that the new neurons are actually born in the adult brain. So, unfortunately, the, there seems to be a link between these newborn neurons and Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease. Parts of the brain die, but it's, and, uh, Alzheimer's disease also leads to impaired memory, right? It's difficult for them to remember things. So, and it turns out that the hippocampus here in the Alzheimer's patients is very affected and it turns out that neurogenesis is so neuro, the new there are fewer newborn neurons in patients suffering from alzheimer's disease so there's a link here between this neurogenesis and alzheimer's disease and it could be that it's part of their the memory loss that they have the difficulties to remember things this could be partially due to the decrease in newborn neurons in this hippocampal area and when this became known to the public that oh there is new 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 neurons are being born in the human brain people got really excited of course and you could buy books like this one here neurogenesis diet and lifestyle how you should live to boost your neurogenesis and 
there are even pills you can buy pills hopefully not here in uh, in the uk but i know that in america if you go to amazon you can buy pills that are supposed to boost your neurogenesis and make you feel better but i would stay away from those pills pills at the moment and yeah but there are actually ways how to yeah stay away from those pills but there are ways to modulate the neurogenesis in your brain so as i said we've seen decreased neurogenesis in disease so like alzheimer's disease have decreased neurogenesis also depression there's a strong correlation between depression and the number of new newborn neurons in the hippocampus so there seems to be when you're sad you have fewer fewer newborn neurons also sleep deprivation if you don't get enough sleep this reduces neurogenesis that is so neurogenesis is the amount of newborn neurons unfortunately also when you get older this the number of newborn neurons is will decrease so it, it seems to be in animal models anyway maybe not humans but if, probably in humans as well there seems to be quite the older you get the fewer neural stem cells you have and the fewer newborn neurons will be born so that's a bit sad right and the title of my talk was how to grow new brain cells so what can we do there are things we can do to increase and boost the newborn neurons firstly learning hopefully you're doing some learning right now and when you learn things and you learn new things and challenge your brain when you go to school or when you watch a nice documentary this has been shown to boost neurogenesis in the brain so keep learning new things all the time exercise exercise is a really good way to to boost uh, the stem cells and it actually activates the stem cells and give rise to more neurons the best thing to do is first do some exercise and then do some learning because the learning actually has been shown to increase the survival the newborn neurons survive better when you're learning because they, they are needed if you use the neurons they're needed and then they'll survive so exercise and learning is of two very good ways and seeing new things so in the mouse if you have mice and you put in lots of new toys so they need to explore them this leads to increased neurogenesis so when you walk to school or when you walk to work try to take different paths see new new environments this has been shown to boost neurogenesis yeah so those are some some of the good things to do and i and just finally as the title was growing new neurons we in our lab here at the university of aberdeen we're actually trying to grow new neurons in the dish so we're in the culture dish so the way we do this is to we need to get a skin biopsy from a person maybe a patient with a special disease or an, a healthy person and we can grow the cells from this pay this person so it, it's not very hurt doesn't hurt very much you just take uh, some skin you can actually do this from a hair as well so we pull a few hairs and then you can grow the, the cells from that and then we can put some chemicals on these and then these skin cells will then become stem cells so they become like cells that are able to give rise to different things and then we try to make them into becoming neuro um, neurons so brain cells and then we can make them into this mini brain or organoid so this and then we can use this to study how these neural stem cells work and also maybe how we can replace cells in patients suffering from alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases so that's some of the work we're doing in the lab here 
at the University of Aberdeen. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much and hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Um, thank you, Daniel, um, for that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, so. I've got a couple myself. So, but anyway, Good. <laughs> so there's one in the chat box. Now, I don't know if I can pronounce all these words, so you might have to give me a hand here. So recently, this is from Alexandra. Recently, I read a few articles highlighting the possible neurogenic effect mesenchymal, I'm not sure if that's right or not, stem cell secretion. Oh, thank you. Stem cell secretions could have. Do you think their effects might be restricted in the CNS? So CNS is the brain and the spinal cord. And the problem with the human and the mammalian CNS is that we're very bad at regenerating these parts of the injury. Some lower animals like like newts, for example, if they hurt their brain, they can regenerate their CNS. You can, they, if they get a bump to the head and lots of neurons die, after a few months, they will be reborn again. But unfortunately, as mammals can't do that. So we'd like to develop techniques to get the brain to regenerate better. And people have tried injecting mesenchymal stem cells. Usually these give rise to other parts of the body like um, bone and bone cells and stuff like that. But, and there has been some evidence suggesting that these cells can give rise to new neurons. But what's more likely is that these, when you inject these cells is that they help support the cells in the brain and maybe, maybe help the stem cells that are already there. So it's more like these, if you inject these cells, it makes the brain a bit more healthy and might encourage regeneration. So that, that's what we think is going on. Okay, I hope that answers Alexandra's question. Um, she also asked, do you make use of bioreactors to increase tissue survival? Okay, so in the last picture I showed is when we're trying to grow these small mini brains. So that's growing, uh, these cells in a dish. And as Alexandra says, we need to grow them in some kind of reactor because usually when you, if, if you grow them in the dish, they just float to the bottom and then they'll attach to the bot bottom of the dish. But we want them to float around. So to do that, we actually, we, sh we shake these cell cultures all the time. So we keep them shaking to make sure that they don't attach to the bottom. And this will make all the goodies like oxygen and all the nutrition in the in the cell media to go into this organoid so they get all the nutrition they they want. So that's how we keep the stem cells alive in the dish and they can grow a bit bigger than they would normally grow. So it's kind of like a bioreactor. Okay. Good. Um, Gabby is asking, she says, a bit off track here, but as a scientist, what do you think about Neuralink and their goal is to one day enable people to operate technology with their mind? So it's maybe a bit of left field for you, but... Yeah. Oh, that, what, what do I think about Interesting question, that? though. Yeah, very interesting. So um, all, already now, we can... There is technology, so you can move arms small uh, machines with your and it's, it's only get it's going only going to get better and better I think yeah because people with like motor neuron and stuff like that they can operate like their keyboard with their eye movement can't they is that, that yeah. similar kind of thing yeah and the people with these diseases they just they they're really in desperate need of better technology to so I think I think it's really awesome how fast technologies mm -hmm. is going and it's only going to get better and better I think. Okay, um, Isha is asking, is neurogenesis always good? That's a good question. So, uh, no is the answer. So, in some cases, when uh, during childhood, for example, if um, some children have a, a seizure. This can be induced by different things.
for example, maybe a, a high, very high fever during childhood can induce a seizure. And this has been shown to increase neurogenesis, so increase the creation of new neurons. But not, this is happening not in places of the brain where it should happen. So these neurons are being born in places where they shouldn't be born, and they've been born too many. And this, in turn, has been shown to lead to epilepsy later on in life. So if these neurons are made when they're not supposed to be made, and when they're made in places where they're not supposed to be made, that's not that's not good. Yeah, it just knocks it all out of kilter, I suppose, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, King is asking, does diet have an effect on new brain cell generation? That's a good question. And that's something we're very interested in here in Aberdeen at the Rowett Institute. Mm -hmm. They're looking a lot of on how the brain reacts to diet and and if we eat a lot of fat, how does that affect the brain? And it, it, it does turn out that if you eat a high fat diet and a lot of calories, that actually reduces the, um, the, the, it reduces the amount of new neurons being made. And also like intermittent fasting, which is trendy maybe if you I've, I've tried it a few years ago when you only supposed to eat certain hours of the day mm -hmm. that's also been shown to boost neurogenesis oh, okay yeah so. cool didn't know that um okay alexander's saying sorry for the multitude of questions but dr sergey pasca has recently coined the term assembloids for at least two spheroids that have grown to interact. Has the University of Aberdeen started looking into them yet? So, so assembloids is basically when we, when usually the organoids, the small cultures that we're growing, they are only one part of the brain. But we, the brain, in, as I showed in the beginning, com contains so many different parts. So we're trying to grow different parts of the brain and then see if they can, in the dish, and see if they can connect with each other and send signal to each other. So that's the uh, assembloid. And uh, I don't think anyone here is doing that, no. But what we are doing is there's not only neurons in the brain. We have other cell types as well. So for example, we have the immune system in the brain that to keep us healthy and kill all the bad things like the they're called the microglia these are cells that part of the immune system in the brain so what we're trying to do now is to have brain organoids and then have the microglia there because th these microglia have been shown to be important for for example uh, alzheimer's disease so th that's one thing we're studying there okay <laughs> it's fine if it's not a kids it's the cat um, okay so Gabby says a bit of a philosophical question as a human race we made wonderful achievements in understanding lower organisms and how their brains functions however there's so much we still don't know about the human brain do you think it's possible the human brain is designed to never become able to understand the human brain yes yeah, so someone said that we're <laughs> But the brain is not advanced enough to understand mm -hmm. the human brain. Yeah, I, I really believe the human brain is extremely complex. And uh, but we're, we're doing progress little by little and and comparing what is I, the pictures I've shown in the beginning mm -hmm. from Ramon y Cajal to now, what we know now, is, it's really amazing what we're learning now. and. Yeah, not, who says what's new in a hundred years' time? You know, yeah, exactly. technology and advances and everything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite nice not to know everything about your brain. Yeah, but otherwise I wouldn't have a job. So. Well, apart from that, yeah. But yeah, um, you know, it's some things you just think. A lot of it's like tied to emotions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. and you're never going to be able to pinpoint that. So no. maybe it's just better just not knowing. Yeah. Um, Alexandra says, thank you so much for answering her questions. Would you be open to emails for further questions if she thinks yeah, of any? Just find me on the Aberdeen website and you can send me an email. No problem. There you go, Alexandra. 
do you think you'll be able to get a, a cure for Alzheimer's eventually? Do you think, you know, you see in 10 years time that something will have happened in your Petri dish that will think, oh yeah, that's that. And we'll turn it into some sort of wonder drug or, or we can inject it into brains that are suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever. Do you think you'll so, get that far or do you not think? So Alzheimer's, we've done so much research mm -hmm. as a field on Alzheimer's over the last, I don't know, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And we haven't got a single drug that can prevent or or cure Alzheimer's or can, a little bit. There was so a year ago, there was a, a drug that was accepted in the, the United States, mm -hmm. but then it turned out to be a big scandal and it doesn't really work very well. Mm. So that's the worry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to think differently, and we need. I think. I think we need to change our strategies a bit and that's but i i hope that it's gonna yeah i mean i think yeah. we all hope one day that we'll, we'll we'll find a cure or, or something that makes it maybe less devastating for families and things but mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah who knows i guess it's um gonna be one of those long questions i think maybe 20 years or 30 or 40, 50 years time might get something but uh yeah okay right another question Okay, this is from Katrin. She says, there is a direct link between sleep deprivation and reduced activity of the hippocampus with a memory inbox switching off. Worse memory as you grow older and worse sleep too often. So are the deep sleep brainwave bursts directly involved in neurogenesis? Oh, that's, that's even too complicated for me. I, I, I'm not sure if, how they are linked. I, ju I just know that... Generally, when it comes to adult neurogenesis, anything good, like exercise, healthy diet, it boosts neurogenesis. And then bad sleep and bad diet is bad for neurogenesis. And but in some, some of these, they've, they've been able to see how this happens and determine which neurons affect this process. But in sleep, I'm not sure if we've come that far to, to examine mm -hmm. how the sleep affects this process. I guess it's bad sleep and bad diet affects your whole body as a whole, yeah. you know, so it's, yeah, it's going to affect your everything rather than just yeah, your brain cells. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if we've got any more questions or if that's, that's going to be it. So if I keep doing my crosswords in my Sudoku, I'm going yeah, to be okay. That's yeah? really good. That's really good. <laughs> that's all right. then. And then keep arguing with your friends and and discussing yeah, things and, and, yeah yeah well that's all right then mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm have to step up the exercise a wee bit but i think the diet and the mental exercises i'm, I'm good i'm good for that's those good that's great yeah <laughs> um okay if we haven't got any more questions for anybody um if if anybody does think of anything just do please email them in um like Daniel said, you can get his email address from the University of Aberdeen website, or if you want to email him into TechFest and I can pass them on, that's not a problem. But uh, that was really interesting. So thank you very much for um, giving up your time this evening, Daniel. That was just, yeah, yeah thank you. really good. And to our audience, thank you again for coming along. And remember, we are running for another week and a little bit. Um, we finished on the first. Um, so, yeah. I'm sure there'll be much more there. Oh, no, wait a minute. I've got another cash. Oh, last minute. Oh, she's saying thank you. Oh, that's all right. Phew. <laughs> that was another question. So everybody's just saying thank you. Um, that was really good. Everybody enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody.